Is Cyberpunk 2077 a scam? That's for you to decide, but after my analysis of three aspects from this franchise, you won't be able to say that something strange isn't going on with the development of the game. The three aspects I'll be analyzing are the over excessive merchandising, unpolished gameplay, <laughs> and the delays, including the cunt content as well. So let's get right into this. The merchandising. Now let me clarify that the merch itself isn't something that's strange. A lot of video games have merchandising. But what's strange about Cyberpunk's merch is the amount there is for a game that hasn't even been released yet. Unlike the other games that mostly capitalize on their hype after their release, such as Overwatch, or are pre-established franchises, such as Pokemon, this game is a relatively new IP for the company. I say relatively because it was announced 8 years ago. I know the series is based off a board game, but still, most of the merch was announced before this year's June gameplay reveal, meaning that so much of the merch was based off of trailers and a few hours of gameplay. And this stuff isn't cheap, averaging around 50 Australian dollars per figure, with the occasional expensive item, and sometimes they get a Bit ridiculous. Oh, let me just convert that into Australian dollars. Oh, oh my god. With seeing so little of the actual game, it's likely they used the merch money to fund their game's development rather than producing a great new game, then capitalizing off its success after the fact. And that's if they haven't already broken even. And from what I can tell, people are eating this stuff up. Some of the most expensive pre-order bundles are all sold out, as well as limited edition consoles and chairs. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I find it strange that there's such a wide variety of cyberpunk merch available, but no actual cyberpunk game to justify the craze. And how is the gameplay? Is it worth all this hype that it's getting? Well, let's find out. I want to make something clear. I don't have a problem with the game's genre or the setting itself. The game is an open world RPG first person shooter that promises to have interesting skills, powers and an expansive city to explore set in a cybertronic future. Setting, setting totally new standard in the genre, both in terms of the gameplay but also on the tech side. Sounds great. But before I go further, keep in mind that this game has been in development for around 8 years. I understand they were also working on The Witcher 3 for half of that time, but hey, maybe don't announce a game that early on and set the bar so high for yourselves all the way back in 2012. I do think the game looks visually impressive, especially for an open world RPG. It probably is the best looking one coming out, and the three different lifestyles you can choose to start out as is a nice idea. But other than that, out of all the gameplay trailers, there was never something that stood out to me as a standard setter. The gameplay itself is nothing special, at least in my opinion. Firstly, most of the gameplay shown consists of walking, talking and driving, and a whole lot less shooting, skills and perks and customizations as the focus. Now, I'm not asking for a completely revolutionary idea, although they kinda did promise that. But for all the hype this game's got, and for the amount of time it's been in development, I would at least expect it to be polished up and smooth. But a lot of areas of the action gameplay seem very clunky. Just check out some of this gameplay. Jesus Christ! My, my legs! I've seen smoother reloading and gun animations in COD, Borderlands, Doom, just to name a few. The execution moves are meh, Skyrim seems to do it better. The fist, sword and gun animations look very uninspiring and awkward at times. The level designs and missions seem very linear as well, 
Although, we have only seen a handful of quests, so I can be completely wrong there. The enemies seem like minus bullet sponges, and you don't have the option to change to third person mode. Although, I can kind of see why. Now, I gotta address something that many of you are probably thinking. Yes, I know the gameplay footage says, Work in progress does not represent the final look of the game. And that is true for gameplay footage a year or so older. But does it really make sense to say that for the June 26 Night City Wire gameplay? When the game was supposedly meant to come out a few months later? It would make no sense for them to show off clunky and unfinished animations and awkward action sequences as a marketing campaign when their game comes out a few months later. No, they would show the best they have to offer. Don't believe me? Read what the devs said when they delayed the game again a week before. They said, and I quote, At the time we are writing these words, Cyberpunk 2077 is finished, both content and gameplay wise. The quests, cutscenes, the skills and items, all the adventures Night City has to offer, it's all there. End quote. And if you go down a few lines, they imply that bugs and balancing are the main reasons for the delay, as well as polishing the game. That's honestly great news to hear, since it may give him a chance to fix some of the things criticized. But why did they need an extra few months when they had eight years? That's if they even fix the cl clunky gameplay in that time. And remember, having that work in progress statement doesn't assure an improvement in the final product. Many games in the past have been present with similar statements in game conferences like in E3, with higher resolutions, more NPCs, in-world objects, game features, and graphic fidelities than the final product. And this is the case for Cyberpunk. If you compare the 2018 E3 gameplay footage to the Night City Wire gameplay footage from June 20, the 2018 footage had more features, more on that later, there was more NPCs and cars on the street, and a generally more alive city. Though keep in mind that the Night City Wire gameplay took place at night, meaning generally less city activity, but still, it seems a bit too quiet. It really feels like the last 8 years of development hadn't really been fully taken advantage of, and this is more evident once we take a look at the delays and the cut content. So let's go. Now, I have no problem with the games being delayed for the sake of being better, more polished final products. But in the case for Cyberpunk, the delays of the game have been shortly followed by features being quietly announced that they're no longer in the game. Initially, the game was supposed to come out in April of 2020, but was moved back to September, then again to November. And throughout the year, more features were getting confirmed cut from the game. These being no wall running, third person cutscenes for your character, which by the way were both shown in the 2018 E3 gameplay, and no customizable cars. And although it was never confirmed, there isn't a subway or train system in the game for traveling, even though advertisements and marketing suggest otherwise. So why is all of this important? Games always change and lose features during development. Open world RPGs always have lots of bugs, a few clunky animations, dialogues, and mostly consist of simple enemy AI. Although that's true, in Cyberpunk's case, somewhere along the console generation's worth of time they had to develop the game, they thought, uh, yeah, we probably need another half year or so. Extra time to dish out even more merchandising, generate more hype and positive press for the game. All the while showing small bits of the core functionalities that may or may not be polished. I mean, why spend money polishing the core gameplay when there's so much hype and money being made before the game's even released? A lot of people have definitely pre-ordered the game, so success is practically assured. That's if they haven't broken even already. Now, all of this isn't 100% confirmed, and I'm not saying that it's definitely what's happening. I'm simply raising the suspicion, as it definitely feels like this is the case. They could, in fact, not be showing off the best of the game to leave all the great content they've been working on for so long for the actual game's release. 
and all the negatives mentioned earlier may be fixed by launch. But you have to admit, something suspicious is definitely going on. Heck, the delay to November could very well be just to capitalize off the next gen launch hype. So all I'm saying is, set realistic expectations. You can't do everything shown in the trailer, and nothing shown has been a new RPG standard, like they promised. And don't be surprised if they do delay the game again. They're making a lot of money from the hype, and definitely won't let that opportunity go to waste. But again, we won't know until the game actually comes out, whenever that is. So after everything shown, is Cyberpunk a scam? Well, I definitely don't think it'll be the greatest RPG of all time, or live up to the hype it's generated over the years. But what I do think it will be is a decent and above average RPG. It definitely won't be trash or terrible, but no new standard in my opinion. But hey, I can be completely wrong. So what do you think? Is Cyberpunk one big scam? I really want to know your opinions, so let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Only like five people watch my videos anyway. Alright, this has been the Hero of Sinner. Thanks for watching.